So the crypto market is down. Bitcoin is only down about 10%, 11% today, but uh, everything else is 20, 30, 40, even 50% down from the recent highs. Many of the altcoins have completely erased all of the gains over the last three months. So you might be scared. Of course, you might not be sure whether now it's a good time to sell, exit positions. What are you going to do? How are you going to navigate this bull run? Is the bull run over? I'm going to answer this question, so I'm going to give you 10 rules that I have, that I implement in my trading. So this is the topic of today's video. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Crypto Corner with myself, OJ, crypto investor and analyst since uh, 2016. I actually invested in 2016. I started with Bitcoin. Uh, I think I, I put about 2000, maybe 2500 dollars into Bitcoin back then and um, over the course of the first two years, so throughout 2016 and 2017, I turned this into $3 million. Now, I didn't exit. So uh, when the, uh, my first bear cycle started in 2018 and throughout 2018 and 2019, I was holding on to my assets. I wasn't uh, willing to sell at a loss. So I saw my portfolio shrink down to around 200K from 3 million. That was quite a significant drop in my portfolio. I saw literally all of the gains that I made melt away. Now, I was lucky still. I didn't really go to zero or, or below my buying price. I was in profit, but um, I learned quite a few lessons from that time, from not selling at the right time. And also from uh, just holding the wrong tokens, uh, being too scared to sell when it's a good time to sell. So today I'm giving you my 10 rules of trading that I have uh, discovered from my own experience, you know, from my own mistakes and everything. These are the rules that I have, that I implement in my trading style. This works for me. And this is what I'm going to share with you in today's video. I'm not saying that uh, you necessarily have to follow all of this or uh, that it will necessarily work for everyone, but this is definitely something that is uh, tested and that's worked for me. I'm not saying that you have to live by these rules, but uh, definitely test them out. As you can see, the market is down and uh, as I said, Bitcoin is only down around 12% uh, actually over the last uh, week, but altcoins are getting really hammered. I mean, look at that. Everything is in the red here. If we go to Crypto Bubbles, this is CryptoBubbles.net. I like it just for the visuals. Everything is red, guys. And we're talking Ordi, 40% down from its recent high. Bonk, 36% down. Fetch, the FET, the token of Fetch AI, 24% down. Gala is 32% down. Ave is 33% down. Theta is also Dodge is 26% down, Solana is, I mean, everything is between 25, 40, 45%. Some of them are even 50% and more down from their recent highs. So um, this is a lesson. Now this, I must point out, this is a pullback. This is what we call a market correction. This is not the end of the bull market. I'm not going to go into uh, the charts now and start showing you, you know, why exactly I'm saying this. I can, uh, I'll probably do another video where I will be uh, looking at the charts and stuff like that. But today I want to just talk about my 10 rules. And this is a post that I made on my blog. This is crypto-corner.com. This is my blog and I just posted this here and I decided that it's actually worth to do a video video for, you know, those people who are not really following the blog and uh, are just following me on YouTube or other social media. So for you guys, I'm going to go through my points here that I outlined in this blog post. And um, as I said, these are tips that I established for myself through my experience, through my mistakes. So hopefully this will help you to avoid making the same mistakes. Okay, so let's get started. My first rule is don't day trade. Focus on long-term position trading. Swing trading is for more advanced users and it can be helpful, but eventually getting out of a coin when in profit is the key and swing traders tend to jump back even when the odds are no longer in favor. They tend to, you know, get attached to a coin because it's been giving them uh, good profits consistently. So they, you know, they would sell, they would jump back in, they would sell, they would jump back in and then the market crashes 
and they're left with a purchase, the, a bag of coins that they just bought higher. And uh, that's really not good for day traders. Uh, they're not really trained to be position traders. A lot, I know a lot of day traders. Uh, they get really nervous when they have to be holding a token for longer than uh, a, a couple of days. You know, they, they, they don't really have the, the patience to be waiting for a token to get to a previous high and stuff like that. And it's just different uh, technicals that go into uh, estimating, you know, your positions and everything. So um, reading the charts as a day trader is different than reading the charts as a position trader. I'm a position trader. I count on the bigger moves. For me, it's more important to catch a move of uh, 20, 30, 40, maybe 60%. You know, this is a good move for me. This is a good profit. And if I have to wait for a couple of months or three months or even uh, five months for that move, I'm okay to wait. And then, of course, when I see that kind of a move, I would sell and I would be doing some scalping. I would be doing some swing trading as well. But I'm not really into day trading. 90% uh, of the day traders are losing money. And I know many of them. So definitely it's too time consuming. It's not worth your time to make uh, two or three percent gains per day on, uh, you know, diff multiple trades and everything and then lose all of it with one red day that is definitely going to come at some point. And if it catches you by surprise, you will be losing far more than what you made over the last week. You know, all of your week's gains will be erased in just one trade in one day. So not the best idea. I'm not saying that it's impossible to make money with day trading. You know, if you have a solid strategy and it's uh, tested and it works for you, I'm not saying you have to change that and you have to switch to being a position trader. But if you're just starting and you're wondering, you know, what to do and you're testing out things, I would suggest to test position trading over day trading. That's all I'm saying here. Okay, moving on to the next one. Buy the hype which means buy into the most hyped narratives or sectors. Every bull run has narratives that are trending and overhyped. Tokens that are positioned in these narratives pump hard, while others, even those with great fundamentals, can be dormant or at least underperform. If your goal is to make money, you don't care for fundamentals. You care about the trend. Sentimental analysis comes in handy to follow what is currently hot. And even if that means meme coins or other zero utility tokens, that's fine. But remember, these are short term flipping assets, not investments. Don't sleep on those. Recently, we had a, a big boom in meme coins. Some of them were going up for weeks, you know, day after day after day after day. You're seeing a green, another 30%, another 40%, another 30%. Right now, Meme coins are the ones that dumped hardest. As you saw, just uh, as I showed you the bubbles, uh, Bonk and Flocky and uh, Whiff, you know, three of the meme coins that were really pumping hard recently, they're down 40% now. And uh, many of the other tokens, the ones with the stronger fundamentals, uh, you know, the, the large market cap coins are only down by 20%. So meme coins are okay for short term. They pump hard, but they also dump hard. That's why you should not be sleeping on this. And uh, this is not just meme coins, but uh, definitely degen coins, degen tokens are for the short term. You're, this is not an investment. They not, should not be considered as an investment. Okay, now moving on to the next one. And that is about patience. Don't exit too soon, but also don't wait forever. This is the hardest part for any new trader. When to exit is hard to know. It's not too obvious when a bull rally is just taking a break, a correction, or has it ended. For many, this becomes clear only when the coin is down 50% or more, and then they feel it's too late, so they hold in hope that it will recover. Sometimes this works, and the rally continues. Thus, we had a correction. Other times, the rally doesn't come back, and we enter a long-term bear cycle. The rule here is to watch out for two things. First, you check if the bull market is still on in general. I mean, Bitcoin is driving the bull market, so always keep an eye on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin has entered a bear cycle, you don't have a choice. You have to get out, even at 50% drawback. It's still better than what will follow, which will be 90% drawback. If Bitcoin is still in a bull cycle, though, the chances of your altcoin recovering after the correction are high. You can either wait for that, or if you're too scared, try to catch a bounce on the upside first in order to exit, and then wait for an indication of a trend reversal where you see higher highs and higher lows. This is when you can enter again for the next rally on the upside. 
I mean, this is not the only indication that you will be looking for. There are some other indicators and patterns and things that you should be looking out for. But generally, if you're, if you're currently in a downtrend and you want to exit, you can either wait for a bounce on the upside and then exit or if you are still thinking that we are in a bull rally, you're confident that we are in a bull rally, then just wait it out. I mean, after 40 or 50% drop, it's a little too late. Unless we have turned the trend. Now, if you see that we are making lower highs and lower lows, that means we are in a strong downtrend. And in that case, even at 50%, you should exit because you can have another 50% the next week and another 60% the week after drops. So you don't really want to be waiting for when your coin is at 90% down to be selling it. So this, these are things that you have to uh, find out for yourself. These are things that you will learn as you go along. It will happen. It's inevitable that you will have these kind of losses at some point. Hopefully this is not going to be your whole portfolio, but just, you know, one or two tokens from your portfolio. Hopefully your portfolio is diverse enough and it's in different sectors. They're not too correlated, meaning that when the market drops and especially if a particular sector, like right now we see that the meme coins dropped heavily because they were really overbought, they were really overhyped. So meme coins right now are dropping much heavier than other sectors. So if you are heavy into one sector, meme coins, then uh, uh, your, the bigger chunk of your portfolio is bleeding heavily. But if you are diversified over several different sectors and you are balanced well, then you have one sector that is really losing, but other sectors are still doing well. And this is important. Diversification of your portfolio is important. So this is a, a bonus point. This was not really meant to be one of the points, but uh, diversification is also very important. I think I've said this many times before, so I didn't really consider it as a major rule. But um, if this is the first video that you're watching from me, this is important. So mark this as a bonus rule. Diversify into different sectors several different sectors and find out which sectors are not correlated because for instance gaming and ai are kind of going hand in hand a lot of the times they're having similar performance when one of these sectors is up and the other one is up pretty much at the same time so and uh, dipin is pretty much in in the same space uh, to some extent even rwas you know, these are sectors that are kind of correlated. So if you are really heavy into these sectors and uh, pretty much all of your portfolio is focused on these three sectors, they're correlated. So when one of these is down, most likely the other two are also down by the same rate, which is not great. So you want to have some layer twos, layer ones, coins that are not correlated so that when one sector is down, Another sector might still be doing well and this way your portfolio is more balanced and it's no all doom and gloom, right? But back to my point, don't exit too soon. What did I mean by that is that the bull run, the bull cycle of Bitcoin is usually a couple of years. We've started already, it's been a good four months or maybe five months of this bull run as it started properly because I don't count last year. 2023, majority of 2023 was still recovering from the previous cycle. So we really started this cycle about four or five, month, five months ago. So by all means, we do have another year, perhaps even a year and a half of this bull run. So uh, don't exit too soon means that you should, some of these tokens in your portfolio can just stay there for the whole bull run until we see a blow off top in Bitcoin, which will indicate that a turning of the trend is coming and it's time to sell, at which point I will be making videos. I will be telling you about this so you will know when to sell. If you were following me uh, from some time ago and you were following me during the last bull cycle, you noticed that around December and January, uh, in 2022, December 2021, January 2022, I started talking about selling everything and getting out of my positions because I recognized that we had already turned the trend. In November 2021, we did have a top in of the cycle. We didn't expect it to end so soon. We thought that we still have another four or five months left from that bull cycle, but this was really the end of the cycle. So in November, I couldn't recognize it on the day or anything, but 
uh, it was towards the end of November. In December, I started selling and throughout uh, December and January, I exited all of my positions and I share that with you on my channel. So if you were following me, you knew that I'm getting out. And if you're following me now, you will know next time I'm getting out. And next time I will try to be even more precise. I have a feeling that I will be able to exit in the same week as we are reaching the top because of uh, one very strong indicator that I already shared with you and I will be sharing it with you again, but uh, now is not the time. Let's move on to my next point, which is accept making mistakes. Don't be afraid of losses. This is why many traders are successful and even more are not successful. If you accept that you make the wrong call every now and then and you had a bad entry, you can easily exit the trade with a small loss, but uh, being too afraid of losing money will only cost you more you will be forced to sell later when the coin is much lower and thus losing even more money. Take a loss early on and relocate the capital to a better performing asset or maybe just wait for that asset to drop again and reaccumulate it if you really think that it's got a strong potential. But uh, definitely, if you enter a trade too high, you know, your entry position was higher and now the market is down and now you've lost 20% or something from, you know, when you entered, take that loss. Sometimes it's better to take a 20% loss and then perhaps reaccumulate when the coin drops by another 40, 50 or 60% because that happens, you know, these kind of corrections happen. As you saw, some of the tokens right now are more than 40% down. They were not 40% down on day one or day two. So when they dropped the first time, the first day, they were maybe a 15, 20% down. This was a good time to exit some of these positions and I did that with some of my positions, not all of them of course, but uh, those that are on exchanges and that I'm trading short term, I exited with a small loss and now I'm happily reaccumulating the same tokens because I do like them. I mean Pendo, Orgy, these are tokens that I've been waiting to drop to these price levels right now and I have been buying them over the last uh, week or 10 days ago so I did buy some of them a bit higher. I took a little bit of a loss as they started dropping as I saw that the whole market starts dropping but now I'm very happily reaccumulating them at much lower prices. So this is a good strategy. This is one of the strategies that I shared with you earlier, um, I think last week or two weeks ago, I shared with you that strategy and uh, if you didn't watch that video, I will link it, it will pop up at the end of this one. And uh, it might even pop up right now here in that corner, but I don't really want you to stop watching this video, so uh, just catch it at the end of this one. And now we arrive at my next point, take profits on the way up. This is another mistake that many people do in crypto during monster rallies. Since the beginning of 2024 and up until now, April, we've been in a monster rally. We had tons of coins pumped by hundreds and some of them even thousands of percentage points. That's three strong months of continuous upside moves across all markets. Did you take profits? Many didn't. Since April started, we've been experiencing a correction in Bitcoin and it's dragging the whole market down. While Bitcoin is down, as we saw, 10-11% from its recent high, many of the coins are down 30 or 40% and many are back at prices that were last year. So all the gains from the last three months have been wiped out. This is a great example of why my strategy that I shared with you recently in the previous video is a winner. When you see big pumps in a short space of time, a day or two days where a coin has jumped by 40%, 50%, even just 30% in a day is quite a significant jump. So this could be a good time to lock in some profits and then wait for a pullback. Sometimes the hype is too strong and the upside move continues longer. Sometimes it doesn't immediately pull back, but instead it might stay high for days and days and days and even just weeks. But then comes a major market correction like we have right now, and this is your opportunity to jump back in, if you really want to have the same asset in your portfolio. All right, and moving on to the next one. Don't use leverage, guys. 97% of leverage traders lose money. Spot is the way to go. I have done leverage trading in the past, and although it can be very profitable for some time, eventually you will make a mistake, and it can be very costly. One wrong trade can wipe out an entire account. And that's happened to many. The high risk of high leverage means that when there's a fake out, either way, not just down, but up too, it can liquidate your position. 
And if this was a big position with big leverage, your account gets wiped out. You're done. All the months of hard labor and big gains can be gone in one day. Just like that. So why risk it? Spot trading is far safer. And if you know what you're doing, you can make a lot of money in spot trading. You don't really need to go into leverage. Also, don't buy in FOMO and don't buy on super green days. What I mean is uh, there will be some days when the whole market is up, aggressively up. You see 20%, 30% and more across all markets and you feel you're missing out. You have a ton of stable coins because let's say you were selling in the last few days or maybe you're just sitting there waiting for a red day and it's not coming. You feel the pressure to jump into something, anything, just to avoid being left behind. Not a great idea. Patience is the key in trading. Another two or three days and you will see a pullback. Another two or three weeks and you might see a bigger correction. So um, even in a strong bull run, even the strongest bull runs don't really go just up. The markets are not only going up. They always have pullbacks and corrections. And we've had a couple of pullbacks since the beginning of the year, but there were minor pullbacks. Now we're actually seeing a correction. And typically what constitutes a correction is more than 25-30% drops. Bitcoin has not done that yet. Bitcoin is only 11% uh, or 12% down in the last week. Um, perhaps it's a little bit more from its all-time high. In fact, it's, uh, I don't have the chart in front of me, but I think it's around 16, 17, maybe around 20% down from its all-time high. I don't think it's 20, but close to 20 but it's not over 20. Typically a correction is over 20%. But if you see the rest of the market, the rest of the market shows you that this is in fact a correction. And this is why I'm saying that if you're patient, if you're waiting, uh, you know, with your bags of stable coins and you're worried that, you know, everything is uh, pumping, you know, I just missed out 30% on this coin, 60% on that coin. Well, Maybe you should wait for a correction because if you jump in during these monster green days, you know, during these uh, strong rallies where every day it's going up and up and up, you're already buying it quite high. You know, it's already gone up by 30-40% in the last week. Maybe it's over 100% over the last month. Is this a good time to jump in? I don't think so. This is now is a good time to jump in when we are 40% down. A coin that has pumped by 100% over the last month will lose all of that in a 40% drop or slightly bigger than 40% drop. And this is exactly what's happening right now. So if you were feeling the FOMO just last month, you would have entered at much higher prices than today, than this week, than right now. So waiting patiently for corrections like this one is your best strategy. Sometimes no trade is the best trade. If the market is too bullish, Pumping too heavily, don't enter. Wait for better conditions, meaning lower entries, corrections. And corrections will come. Even if you have to wait a couple of months, corrections will come and then you will be happy that you waited because you will be rewarded. Because if you were buying in March, right now you are definitely down. If you didn't sell at the start of this correction, right now you are down 30, 40%, maybe even more on some of your tokens. If you were waiting throughout the whole of March, and the beginning of April, and you knew that you are waiting for a correction, you had a plan, you had a strategy, and you followed that strategy, and your strategy was saying, don't buy now, wait for a correction. Now, you would be buying at prices that people were buying back in December last year, or early January this year. Many of the tokens are, have dropped all the way down to these same prices. As I said, they raised all of the last three months of gains. So this is a great opportunity right now to be buying all of these tokens at the same prices that they were before the big pump happened. And now over the next few months, they will experience the same pumps. So again, you will be able to make the same gains that you thought you were missing out back in February and March. All right, the next one, being a DJ and is fine, but uh, you have to be wise about it. Having a DJ portfolio where you go into high risk assets for high profit is very common in crypto, right? I keep a smaller size of my portfolio in DJ tokens to balance things off. The majority, of course, of my portfolio is in coins that have stronger fundamentals as they tend to drop less during corrections and they're generally safer for the medium or longer term, which in my case can be several months to a year. 
for as long as the bull run continues. I'm holding this. But about a third of my portfolio is allocated to short-term holdings, including DGEN tokens that pump hard, but they also drop hard. So these are the ones that I'm selling on pumps. I apply my main strategy where I sell every time I see a decent pump and then allocate the funds to a different token or maybe reaccumulate the same token during corrections and pullbacks like right now. So this is definitely a strategy that has worked for me really well. Degen tokens and meme coins and just, you know, tokens that don't really have strong fundamentals. You have to know which ones they are in your portfolio and you have to take this, you have to watch this far more frequently than the other ones. And uh, ideally, you want to be trading this more frequently. Uh, on a weekly or monthly basis. You don't really want to be sleeping on this. You can sleep on the stronger fundamental coins, you know, the, the, the big market cap coins, the top 20, you know, the layer ones and the layer twos. But uh, when it comes to DGEN tokens, these are not investments. These are short term flipping coins to make you to, to basically grow your portfolio faster. But it's also higher risk. So you have to be very alert on what's happening with them. What is the price action there? Do you really want to keep holding that token or you want to exit? All right, moving on to the next rule. And that is do not over trade. Too much trading can be damaging to your portfolio and you're prone to make more mistakes if you're glued to the screen all day, every day. So take some breaks, let some orders sit and wait. Identify your target zones and place your orders. Then go out, enjoy life. Spend time with friends, family, do things, fun things. And last but not least, identify support and resistance levels and position your orders accordingly. Use price action to determine support and resistance and Fibonacci retracement is a good tool too. Also, keep an eye on the trend in an uptrend. Higher lows and higher highs are crucial. If you see lower highs followed by lower lows, then the trend might be reversing. Most likely it is. Identify crucial trend line levels that might get broken and this will be signals for action. On the way up, breaking a trend line is bullish. On the way down, however, breaking a trend line is a bearish signal. So you might want to exit at such breakout points. This is relative to your time frame, of course, also to the cycle momentum. There are several factors to take into account, but overall, the trend is your friend. Holding on to tokens during a bear trend is not a good idea unless it's a short term correction. So you need to know where in the cycle you are and if it's a good idea to keep holding or is it a time to exit. And as I said, uh, when I am exiting, I will be sharing with you. Right now, I'm not exiting. This right now is a correction. It's uh, what I call a, a temporary pullback in the market. This is now because of the halving. Every time around the Bitcoin halving, the market goes down. And then it takes another four, six weeks, sometimes even up to eight weeks, which means a couple of months before we actually see a proper rally starting. But um, if Bitcoin just consolidates sideways, you know, kind of moves between support and resistance and, and doesn't really do anything crazy, any crazy pumps or any cra crazy dumps, then money starts getting allocated to altcoins because people are searching for volatility. And if Bitcoin is not providing volatility, altcoins are going to boom. We're going to have an out season. And if you're not sure about what out season is, I also have a post on my blog about this and a video as well. You will see it at the end of this one. I will drop links in the description below. How about that? Make sure to check out the links in the description below. This is where I'm going to drop some of those links for you to go and check them out because you need to be aware of these cycles. You need to be aware of uh, all the terminology that I'm using here. You need to know how to navigate this market. And right now we are in a bull market. Make no mistake. This correction is not the beginning of a bear trend or bear cycle. It's not going to be a long term correction. This is just uh, one of those corrections that happen during a bull cycle that are very healthy for the cycle. This is also very important. Corrections like this of 30-40% are really healthy for the market because they establish strong support levels. 
and then we can finally start moving upside on the upside again so then later when we do have another selling pressure at some point you know the buyers uh, the sellers are really hitting hard and they are push, pushing the price down we actually have established already a support level from the previous correction and we know that coming close to that level means that we are finding support there we are most likely going to stop at that support a lot of the times we don't even have to go all the way down to that previous support level but it's there so you know that this is the worst case scenario this is the support that is going to hold so establishing support levels right now on the way up is important for us during future corrections and the 60,000 is a psychological support as well as te technical support. Uh, we also have a 58,000 and 56,000. These are levels that previously we have found support. We have established support. So right now being uh, around 60,000 in Bitcoin does not scare me. I know that even if we drop more, we can drop to 58, perhaps even 56. I don't expect us to drop any further than that. And this is because I'm seeing on the charts what we've done previously, what was the previous price action, where the key support levels. So this is giving me confidence to plan and strategize what I'm doing from here. So hopefully when you are able to identify support and resistance, this would help you as well. And this is why it's my last rule here. It's kind of obvious. Read the charts, right? Of course, it is obvious that if you want to make money in trading or investing in crypto, it helps if you are able to read the charts, not just watch, you know, people's videos and, and do what they say. But it's good to actually have some of that skills yourself. So use the time, you know, do some trades or maybe just watch the charts. Uh, chart some patterns, you know, use the technical indicators, make predictions, uh, prognosis, write them down or record yourself or whatever you want to do to see how you're actually doing when you are still starting in trading crypto because you need to have some confidence when you are really working with bigger amounts and bigger amounts will come eventually. But uh, if you want to make them faster, you should learn these skills as soon as you can. So start today and hopefully the rules that I just outlined for you are going to help you in this endeavor. This is why I'm doing these videos. This is why since 2016, when I started my channel, I've been sharing everything that I'm doing, everything that I've learned and everything that I know about cryptocurrency, my analysis, my charting, you know, everything that I can help with because I learned everything from vi watching videos on YouTube. At the beginning when I started, there were about 10, maybe 12 people posting videos on crypto on YouTube. Now there's, you know, thousands of them. And my channel is by no means one of the biggest anymore. It was growing very fast in the beginning. But of course, I'm doing these videos not on a daily basis. I'm not really pursuing this as a business or career or anything like that. I'm doing it for fun. And as long as I keep it in my free time and, uh, you know, and, and I keep it fun, I will continue doing it for free. Because as I said, this is not a business for me. Unlike most of the other channels that use clickbait all the time and all of these thumbnails, you know, with the funny faces and everything. I mean, this is what's become of the crypto YouTube right now. I don't really like it. I, I don't really subscribe to it. And uh, this is why my channel is not with hundreds of thousands of followers, but it's fine for me it's totally fine and if you found my channel if, through a search or any other means then good for you because I'm giving you my honest opinion here and I'm giving you my personal experience this is the best that I can do and I will continue doing that thanks for staying until the end of the video do check out the links in the description below and I'm gonna see you in the next one